Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Spiritually Addicted Podcast. I'm going to go ahead today and talk about four things that are going to keep you on track for your recovery and keep you on track for being the best version of yourself, but also continuing to make progress every day, because these four things were the key contributing factors for me in the beginning that helped me see this process, this trust that I needed to establish with myself, see it more clearly. So... First thing I wanted to go over was changing one thing per day because how you don't understand how big of a deal it is to just change one thing per day. It's like a bank account with interest. It starts to compound quickly and you become a better version of yourself by doing one small thing per day. I know it sounds so crazy. What is one thing per day going to do? A ton. It will start to do things like help you rewire your brain, help you think different help you find new patterns in your life that maybe you weren't aware of before. But what this really does is it starts to establish a routine of becoming better, of becoming the best version of yourself. And I want to give you an example. So I had a long history of drug and alcohol abuse over 12 years. And it comes from my family as well. But I will tell you that every when I used to work in finance, it was doing really well for myself, thought it was okay I'm just going to drink and do drugs the rest of my life. It's part of the process. That's how I get through life because I was always masking something. So on Wednesdays, I would go to trivia and I would always think a couple beers. I'll be good to have some trivia. But what would always happen? I'd go overboard. I'd do too much. I'd wake up hungover Thursday. Friday was terrible, but then I would have to drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday to cope with it. And there goes my weekend. I'm miserable again. So what I started to do was I started to do one one Wednesday, I remember specifically thinking, I had all these things happen in my life. I'm like, why am I always feeling shit? Why am I always having the worst days, like Thursdays and Fridays when I'm supposed to be enjoying my life, when other people I see are doing things and I'm going to bars and drinking at 35, 36 years old, 34 years old. Really. So what I started to do was, uh, Wednesdays, I would go to these trips. I'd do some cocaine. I would drink. I would... Who knows, sometimes smoke weed, but it doesn't matter. I would be feel awful the next couple of days, which led into more drinking later on. So what I did was I remember specifically, it was like one Wednesday in a February of a couple of years back, I decided, and I had already slowly been on a path of getting a little bit better, meaning eating a little bit better, fasting a little bit here and there, drinking a little more water, trying to be as positive as I can. But I remember specifically, and this is what I mean about one thing starts to change your life. It was a Wednesday where I'm like, every time I go, I feel like shit. My life stinks. I'm not stinks. I actually always enjoyed a lot of my life, but like, I always feel weird. I'm always like out of place, feel hung over all the time. My body hurts. So one Wednesday I said, you know what? I'm going to start walking my dog chase. It was cold. It's in PA. I used to live there. It's cold. I'm going to start walking my dog and listening to a positive podcast, which at the time it was Joe Rogan. I listened to a whole bunch of different ones now, but the Joe Rogan one so that I could think. So listen to Jordan Peterson talk and I would start to take these long walks, hour, hour and a half, two hours, first to take my mind off the fact that I wanted to be a trivia drinking and doing drugs. But the second thing is it was making me think and what I noticed about myself and a pattern pattern for me is I think very well when I am walking because it helps me. It, not only is it scientifically proven it helps you, but it stimulates a lot of things for me stimulates a lot of really good thoughts as well. So I started doing that on one Wednesday and then that started to lead to every Wednesday doing instead of going out and doing these trivia things and feeling awful for the rest of the week and into the next week. So from there, what happened was I started to eat a little bit better. It's like, you know what? I'm going to start eating a little bit better. Started to here and there, go to the gym, play some basketball again. Started to, and this was one thing that it did. One thing started this whole. What happened later on, about a month, month and a half later, and I don't know how the universe always works. I just know it does work in your favor. When you start to do better for yourself, your higher power or your God, whatever you want to call it, says, my guy, my gal, they're ready for something new. Send them a little bit more because it always gives you as much as you can handle. Not anymore because it knows you can't handle it and you'll fall apart. So what I could handle at that time was, all right, Josh, you're not really enjoying your finance job right now. You need to change your life. You need to get out of the apartment you're in. And it gave me this opportunity to a new place, new finance firm. But I was still doing drugs and drinking on the weekends. 
I then at that point, not only was I nervous because I didn't know how the new job would go, there was a drug test attached to it. I'm like, how am I going to get rid of all this stuff in the next eight, nine days when I've been doing it for a while? So what I did was for after this walk in, it occurred and a little bit of exercise and eat a little bit better. I then was like, all right, for nine days, I'm going to do nothing but drink more water. I'm going to eat only grilled chicken and salads. I'm going to go to the sauna twice a day. And I'm going to jog and play basketball in the gym when I can. In nine days, so mind you, a month and a half before that, I was still drinking, drugging, doing all these things all the time. Nine, a month went by, I get this job opportunity. Nine days of complete health eating, the sauna, and working out, doing some things for myself to better myself. I'm like, I could feel this good myself in nine days? So... From there, I not only did I get the job, I got everything out of my system. I started feeling good. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start doing this on every day because I promise you this. If you are an addict or an alcoholic and you are having any inclination to go drink or do drugs, sit your ass in a sauna. And although, yes, it may come back later, I promise you it will stop the repetitive pattern here of thinking about it and stop your impulsivity because all you'll think is, hey, I'm a top. I'm hot. It will stop it. It will clear out toxins from your body. But either way, going back to the story, it led into that job, which then led into a new apartment where I got out of old neighborhoods that I was in, which then led to more opportunities from people I met, which then eventually took me out of all these environments that said, Josh is now ready to level up. He is ready to not only do what he's been doing, but be giving a whole new chance spiritually. I had a spiritual awakening about a year and a half after that or a year after that when I was in my own energy, doing a lot of things for my health, finding out where I wanted to go, what I wanted to be, doing some meditation. I slowly compounded all of this from one thing, skipping a Wednesday trivia night and walking my dog for an hour, hour and a half a day. It all led into new things that I was not aware of that I could do. I knew, I knew a greater version. You just like you do, whoever's watching this, there is a greater version of you that exists now. It exists right now. It is waiting for you. It is sending you energy. It is your higher self saying, come on, come on. I'm waiting for you. Your life is amazing here. Yes, it took a little bit of struggle and I see it as struggle then. Now I see it as a gift because I love my life. I fucking love my life, even though I still struggle at times because it is my higher self going, we know you got more in you. Come on, come on. And each time that I need something or something is there that I'm looking at, am I going to get through this? I always do. So change one small thing a day. I don't even care if it's I'm going to drink more water tomorrow or I am going to take a walk for 10 minutes tomorrow when I never walk or I'm going to talk to my significant other about my feelings, whatever it is, something for the betterment of you every day will give yourself also a dopamine hit, which will then spiral into other things. Cause like, it feels pretty good. I want to try something new. And the more uncomfortable you get and get out of that comfort zone of what you're doing now, the less you feel addicted to the old things that you were addicted to in the past. It's cool. It's like a new pattern for you. It's awesome. I'm telling you. Um, so that's the first thing. Change one thing per day. I don't care what it is. And if I had to give any recommendation, sauna, go sit in one. Always go sit in one every day. I do it every day. I love when I'm in there. Rock out to some music. I feel great when I'm done. All the toxins are released from my body. You build heat shock proteins in your body. You're repairing DNA. You're doing all these things. Try it. If you can't think of anything, go do a sauna. Try it. So that's the first thing. Change one small thing a day. The second thing for relapsing, stop judging yourself. I work in a rehab now. I see people that mess up. And I tell them all the time, it's good to see you. Not that I'm happy you're back here, but I am happy you took the step to not keep continuing to spiral. It is not the end of the world. No one is judging you. No other addicts are judging you. You think about you. You're the only one that thinks about you the way you do. No one cares. And I don't mean that in the mean way. People care about you, but they're not going, oh, they messed up. They're it's the end of the world. They No, you relapsed once. That's okay. Pick up and keep going. You are not at square one again. I hate when I see people on like 
90 days, 60 days, of six months, nine months, a year rehab. They have, or, you know, sobriety. They have one thing happen and then it's back to square one. No, it is not back to square one. You are still the version of you now. You just had one slip up. We are not perfect. It is not the end of the world. Who even cares? Yeah, if you continue to go, care. But who cares? You messed up one time, who cares? I messed up like 20 times and then spontaneously got sober because I noticed, why am I caring so much? Who cares? Does it matter? Yes, it matters to the point I don't want you to die. I don't want anything bad to happen. But it's part of the process. You're going to do it most of the time. I'm not naive. I know people mess up, but I believe in every single addict because it is not the end of the world. Stop judging yourself, not only on relapses, but stop judging yourself on anything. Yes, you could be a better version of yourself all the time if you want, but you're awesome how you are. You think about this when you truly listen to this statement. You are a one of a kind, unique you. You, the God or creator, whatever you want to call it, thought so highly of you that it said, I have to make a version of so-and-so. In my case, I have to make a Josh or this all, this whole thing doesn't work. This whole world, this whole reality doesn't work. I have to have that version of, of this person. How awesome is that to think of that that's how much your creator loves you? So be the unique you. Stop judging yourself. Love yourself. Be kind to yourself. It is not the end of the world if you mess up. So there's the second thing. The third thing is an inner strength that we, I'm a recovered alcoholic and addict, but addicts have, alcoholics have that no other person has. All the things that you have been through in your life, if you sit there and you truly think about them, either now while you're listening to me or after this podcast, you will notice life is happening for you all the time to teach your ass a lesson of what you are doing either correctly or incorrectly based on how conscious your efforts are towards your life. What I mean by that is I used to look at, I'm going to give you an example. I've, I had a long history of my mom, my mom passed away when I was 21 from being an alcoholic. She died from drinking. I went to jail right afterward because I didn't know how to cope with things. And I drank and I did drugs. And then I had a 10 year Percocet problem. Then I was doing cocaine and I was doing, then I was drinking all the time. Then I, after jail, I, went back and forth between jobs. Then I would do drugs while I was going to work. Then I was doing Adderall. Then I was doing Suboxone. Then I was smoking weed. Did all these different things. Um, I went through a divorce when I was 31. I had all these things happen in my life where at the time, not anymore, I don't see any of them. I can see. It took me about, so about two years ago to really realize it. Um, but I used to see it all as like, damn, crazy shit happens to me all the time. But... Now I see it as, no, I had to go through all those things. One, I wasn't making the best decisions. I know that now. I knew that at the time, too. I just didn't think about it because I would falsely believe things. But I now know that I was making bad decisions. And when I look at those bad decisions, though, it always led me to the one thing I'm very grateful for is I learned lessons from them. Yes, some lessons took longer than others. But I learned that all those struggles in my life were to make me a badass dude who loves. There are not a lot of people in this world that are badasses that love people. I am one. There are a lot of addicts like that. We are, we are, we have figured out, whether it be through a spiritual awakening or through your own life and looking at the lessons you've learned, or whether you're even thinking about it now, you are able to integrate both dark and light, meaning love. And that it's called darkness or negativity, badass, whatever you want to call it. You can integrate them both and love even more. It's a It shows that you are able to pull yourself out of a hell and still be kind through all of that. That is a gift to the world. That is a gift to the world to understand what others have gone through. I used to look at me. My mom was an alcoholic, so we moved around a lot. And I used to look at living with my dad, then my mom, then my grandma, then my dad, then my mom, then my grandma. I used to look at it as a negative because I think I went to like 10 or 11 schools by the time I was done with college. And I was always moving every year, all these different places in PA, always, never in the same school for more than two or three years, except in high school for my four years. 
when I looked at it then, I was always like, I never have any real friends anywhere. And I'm always in different groups of people. And both, I, you, I love that about myself. I love that. I am the best version of me because of that. I've learned that I am everyone. I am a, everyone is me in a different body. You've all, if I walked in your shoes, I would be you. You would be me if you walked in my shoes. We are all experiencing this human experience. And I love it. I love that I went to all those different schools. I know everyone from poor people to rich people to, to middle class people to finance people to um, to English majors to college graduates to non-college graduates to black people, white people, Mexicans, Asians, rich, poor, young, old, all these different walks of life. And I know them because I got to experience it. At the time, I would go, no, 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 no that sucks. I don't know anything. I, I, I. I'm always finding myself in these weird spots. No, they were awesome spots because I got to learn what other people go through all the time, what other people, what their experience is like, which broadened my horizon of my experience and my awareness of the world. It is a gift. And if you have been through addiction and you have come out either the other side like me, or if you're still going through it and you're trying to fight, you have a strength. Yes, there are parts of it that look like a curse. Because if you continue to do it, it could be. It will continue to lead to dark things. But when you come out the other side, it is a gift. If I told people my entire life story and then said, here, take this, regular person, they would fall apart immediately. I have a strength. You have a strength that others will not ever understand. And for the last year and a half, my spiritual awakening has brought me down a path which if I wasn't strong enough to go through all that in my past, I would have died already. This has been the hardest thing that I've ever gone through in my life, but I am extremely grateful for it because of how awesome I've become. I've become the best version of myself day in and day out. And each day I tried my the best I could to be the best version of myself and make the world a more loving place. And I've done it every day consistently. And that's the other thing. Consistency, consistency will change your life. Changing one thing a day with consistency. So with that inner strength, use it for yourself. You will continue to notice if you can go, if, if you can go through all the shit you've been through with, with addiction, you can go through everything else because that's just as hard, if not harder than trying to live a better life. You just have to get used to the regular life. That's all that is. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing I wanted to go through is surrendering for two reasons, surrendering to God's will or God's plan for you. And then surrendering control of outside forces. So surrendering to God's will, I didn't understand what that meant. I always thought because I was smart, smart, or that I breezed through jobs and I only had to work two, three hours a day when other people had to do eight and I made more money and did all these things that I knew what I was best for me and I would do this and I will do that. And why are people dumb and why are this? No, 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 no. What I found out was I need to get the hell out of my way and start following my passion, start following my energy, because God has a plan for me. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for all of us. And I'm not saying a religious God. I don't give a shit about that. I'm talking about whatever this creator of everything is, wants you to be the best version of yourself. And it unconditionally loves you. You want to be negative? It will unconditionally give you negativity. Saying, I'm, I love you. I'll give you this if that's what you're saying. But if you want to be positive, you want to be a better version of yourself, it unconditionally gives you these opportunities to live a peaceful, calm, happy life. You are not always going to be happy. That is realistic. It's, it's unrealistic to think that. You are never always going to be sad. There are waves. And you notice that as you go through your life. There are always waves of these. So when you start to become more of a observer of your path, and you understand that energy controls all of us, and your energy is telling you to follow a passion that you have, God has a plan for you and to surrender to it. It doesn't mean sit in your apartment and go, I better get all the riches I want. I better get, no, take action. Karma, well, karma, if you look at the Sanskrit word for it, it's action, take action on your passions. But there is already a mechanism built in for you to have the best life that you want to experience. Your thoughts create your reality. The more that you 
tell your brain, I am great, I am loving, I am kind, I am generous, I am rich, I am happy, I am healthy, I am whole, all these things, just like whatever you're thinking right now is making you, telling you a story, you can change your story whenever you want. It's not going to start, it's not going to be easy and you're not going to do it in one day, but saying small things to yourself, catching yourself in negativity patterns and going, I'm aware I am negative right now. That way you're creating an awareness there. I'm aware I'm happy right now because that way you're starting to balance it more and understand that if you surrender more, meaning surrender your thinking you control everything to a flow of the universe or flow of your creator or flow of your life, energy will start to take you ways that you have never thought you could experience. This world is so different than I ever thought. And it is amazing. Your life, you are me. I am not better than you. I have just slowed the thoughts down to a more calm, peaceful place through things like health and meditation and yoga and better people and learning. I've done these things consistently. I didn't do it overnight. It took me a year and a half to get here. But I love that I did. Every day I had to struggle a lot for a while to understand that this was pushing me to a point that I can be the best version of myself that I know I already, I knew existed always. I just wouldn't put in the effort to do it. I'm not saying you need to work as hard as I did because you'll never know what I did. I'm just saying work a little harder on yourself each day and watch that path become more clear. How do you know you're on your path? You lose the path altogether and you start to follow what your intuition is saying. That's how. Second part of that surrender is surrendering control to things outside of you. Stop letting people, places, events control how you feel, how you react, how you interact with the world, because that is just letting other things control you. Somebody cuts you off in traffic, you flip out for a half hour. Somebody just controlled you that you're never going to see again. Why do you care? Why do you ever care? Who cares? Because then once you get through it, you're like, you don't even think about that you were angry before, but it lingered because you let it. Fuck it. Who cares? Let it go. Let it all go. Because what you start to notice is the more calm you are in every, if I told you how much wild shit has happened to me over the last year, but I just keep letting it go. I have lost people, places. I've lost my apartment, my dog, my job, my money. I've lost all these things. But new, better things have come into my life because I released all that old energy. I didn't want it. It wasn't me. The new version of me needed to release everything for the new version to exist. And as I continue to follow my path, I understand it's not about struggling. Yeah, you can call it that if you want to. I don't anymore. There are lessons to learn so that I can say I am ready for my new self. I am ready for this new reality that I've created. I'm not bullshitting anymore. Before, in the beginning, I had to fake it. I had to go in the mirror and go, I love you. 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 I am kind. I am good. I don't really do that anymore because I don't need to. My thoughts have significantly changed to focus on the things I love. I've cut out TV. I've cut out mostly movies. I've cut out negativity. I've cut out negative Instagram. I've cut out people that were negative, that talk shit, that that gossiped. I cut out drugs. I cut out alcohol. I focused on health. I focus on good videos that I want to watch. I focus on positive music. I focus on energy healing. I focus on rehab and rehabilitation. I focus on saunas and cold plunges and these things that are good for my health because I am telling a new story to my mind, which is then creating that reality. You can do it too. You can absolutely do it. I am not an in, in, not an inch better than you. I'm not better than anyone. I am the same. You have the same abilities I do, just you're unique with your abilities. So you can get here too by changing one thing a day, slowly compounding that, and then a new thing, and then a new thing. But that doesn't have to happen overnight. One small thing a day. Don't judge yourself for relapses. Keep moving forward. You have an inner strength about you already. And when you realize it and you decide to use it, you will never look back because you will notice that it was harder to use drugs than it is to be a better version of you and surrender to God's will as well as your 
then surrender control of letting things outside of you control you because your reactions and your emotions are completely under your control and you let that dictate your life or not. So as you go through these processes, I hope that you found some of this useful. I know that I would love to hear some comments on things. I want to hear a little bit more from the audience and the crowd about maybe if there's some things that are bothering you recently or maybe what you struggle through with your alcohol and addiction. I also want to get some more guests in the podcast that are now alcoholics and addicts that are recovering so we can start talking about these things and being more open with it because, again, I don't give a shit about any of it. Don't let anybody judge you. Don't be judged. Anytime someone's judging you, it's just really an insecurity or something about themselves that they see in you that maybe you have this glow that they don't like or whatever it may be. But don't worry about judgment. It's nothing. Let's start interacting a little bit more. I appreciate everybody here. I'm grateful for this new life. Hit me up um, either on Instagram, highly, highly underscore vibration 11. Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook or start leaving some comments in the sections. I appreciate all of you and I'll talk to you on the next episode.